Are you a passionate business owner or entrepreneur ready to take your message to the world? Do you dream of launching your own podcast but don't know where to start? Introducing my eight-week Start Your Podcast program designed to guide you every step of the way in creating and launching your podcast. In this program, you'll learn the essential skills needed to craft engaging content, record high-quality episodes, and market your podcast effectively to reach your target audience. I will work closely with you providing personalized guidance and feedback to ensure your podcast stands out in a crowded digital space. But hurry, spots are limited and applications for our upcoming cohorts are closing soon. Don't miss this opportunity to turn your podcast dreams into a reality and launch your podcast this summer visit our website donnaeed.com forward slash apply and apply now to secure your spot in our next cohort together let's make your podcasting vision a success you're listening to the mindset and action podcast the place to be to grow and streamline your business i'm your host donna Eid. let's jump into the show Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Leonardo da Vinci. Welcome back to the podcast, everybody. I'm so glad to have you here today. And I am so glad to be bringing back one of my OG guests. Jude Wharton is in the house. Welcome, Jude. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. She is minus Chris today. So uh, I don't know how funny Jude's going to be on her own, to be honest with you. But her and Chris together are quite comical. So. <laughs> The pressure is now on. The like, pressure's got, on. <laughs> I feel like I've got to turn this into like some kind of stand-up routine. But you know. No, do you know what? What we need from you is the good information about websites. So that that's what we're here for. Um, so if you are not aware of my original episode with Jude, Jude and Chris own a website development company. They do some fantastic things, but Jude can say it a lot better than me. So Jude, introduce yourself to the listeners. So yeah, I am Jude Wharton. I am one half of Ready Steady Websites. The other half is my husband and business partner, Chris. And apparently together we are a comedy duo. (laughs) Um, So yeah, we've been in business for 14 years this month. We will be celebrating our 14th business birthday. Um, When we originally went into business, we had a small digital agency essentially we did bespoke websites and branding we still have that business second floor designs limited but about five years ago we launched ready steady websites to provide really good high quality websites but in a way that people could understand them could be in charge of them themselves and could get them for a better budget range for those solopreneurs and people who are brand new to business I love that and you're still married we are yes I mean we've been together for over 24 years now and yeah 14 of them in business together and we still talk to each other which I think is amazing it's like seriously hats off to you because there is not many people that could work with their other halves and work so closely as well because it's not like you're in uh, different sort of areas like you literally in the same room 24 7 I'm just like I don't know if I could do it with my other half, I have to say. <laughs> I think, and recently I did a little bit of a kind of, I put a social post out there in a couple of business groups I was in, just sort of how many other people in here are in like couples in business, husband and wife teams. And there was such a like divide of some people, there was a lot more than I thought there would be. And then the hell no comments. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like, yeah, you either can or you can't. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly um, and my other half does work with like he's he's a tech person so um he can code and he works for a college and he does all of the system stuff that makes sure that rooms are allocated to the right students and the exams and you know enrollments and he does all the back-end technology for that so he's got a very good understanding of the tech side of things whenever I'm stuck on tech I'm like babe and he'll but sometimes I'm just like are you serious? Like, mm, and it, like, I get, I just couldn't imagine doing it as a permanent thing, but I am very grateful for his help <laughs> when I need it. So yeah, I think that is, that is to be commended. And I think you should definitely start doing like a podcast tour of, of how to like survive marriage and working with your other half, because I think it's amazing. It's just an amazing feat. I just I like, it. yeah, it's, it's incredible. And I think the communication that you have to have in a marriage and the communication that you have to have in business, are like the two key things. And I just think you two must have very good communication skills to be able to survive both 
together at the same time. <laughs> yeah, and I think uh, that does help. And when we, I mean, we talked about this on the previous podcast, mm. but like when we started working together, those first couple of months, it was hard. Like yeah. we both come from different roles where we were the boss. And so it was then like just getting the dynamic and everything. But once you get it, once I think you've got those, the right, the right roles, the right communication yeah. and working out how each other works, it like it worked for us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I love that. I love that for you because it gives you both the time to actually be really great present parents to your boys. And I think that is a real great gift that you've been able to give them. So yeah. congratulations. Thank well done. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and it was the reason we did it. So yeah, yeah. I'm glad it worked. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Right. So that's a little bit of a background um, check and a bit of a bit of a congratulations well-deserved congratulations Thank there you. for you on your years in business marriage and life in general but we're here to talk about websites and one of the things that I wanted to sort of talk to you about was something that I've been seeing quite a bit recently which is like people saying oh you know I've got my social media I don't need a website and I do have a friend who has been planning to do a website for herself for since I've known four years at least um, I don't know and she's just got a landing page that says like website coming soon and it's been up for four years and I mean technically she gets a lot of her business through word of mouth and you know she's somebody who works one-on-one -on -one with people so she does have limited capacity and it works for her absolutely great but I always feel like she could, she could really just do with with something um so I would love to hear your opinion on people who think that they don't need a website and why 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 that's possibly the wrong answer <laughs> I mean I think anyone who is running a business who doesn't have a website is missing out on work because I speak to so many people from so many different areas of life different areas of business who have nothing to do with websites who say that the first thing they do when they hear about someone through word of mouth or they see someone on social media or someone's in a networking group with them and they're interested in what they do is they go to find their website. Mm -hmm. That is their first thing that they do after that initial contact. And obviously you hope that sometimes you're going to get that work directly through your website. But more often than not, people are visiting your website once they've already had some kind of knowledge of you from some point of contact. And so if you haven't got a website there, that is already putting off quite a few people. Um, and I think especially if you have got a landing page there saying your website's coming soon and maybe someone's heard about her once and gone and had a look and gone, oh, OK, well, the website's coming soon. I'll check back in a few months. Mm -hmm. And then they check back in a few months and the same landing page is there. The reflection that is having on a business isn't a positive one. It doesn't look like they've got their business in hand. It doesn't look like they're investing in their business. And so I really think that if you want your business to look like you're taking it seriously, to look like that it is actually your main income, your main focus, you need to have a website there. Um, and so I think that is incredibly important. And I wrote a blog post recently, um, or social media post, I think it was on LinkedIn, um, about the stats around people visiting websites. And especially now, like the younger generations, the millennials and younger, they, they will not consider working with a business, buying from a business until they've been and seen the website. Um, so yeah, I think it's incredibly important. Yeah, well, that's interesting, actually, because, yeah, I'm somebody who will go and look at your website um, when I've sort of first met you. And and I think it does. It, to me, it's like a red flag if they haven't got a website. It's like, are you legit? And if I saw something that was like website coming soon, my assumption, if I didn't know the person very well, would be that they haven't been in business very long either and that they perhaps are just starting out and perhaps that's not the level of business owner I want to be working with um depending on what it is obviously but yeah I think there is a lot of a uh, lot of mixed messages that having a landing page or not having anything at all is actually giving to potential clients um that you could be losing I mean to me I've always been taught that your website is your shop window you know if yeah. you haven't got a physical brick and mortar it's your shop window and it's a way for people to 
find out about you without the pressure of being sold to or the feeling that they're going to be because obviously you know if you're a solo entrepreneur I'm sure you're not somebody who's necessarily um, a hard seller or whatever but people often feel that if they come and speak to you that they're going to get sold to and the website's a nice easy way of like looking around seeing who you are working out whether they like your vibe seeing what you actually offer it's that pre-qualifying stage almost they're pre-qualifying themselves before they get to you so uh yeah really important I think it's very important I'm I'm I'm, I'm glad you agree <laughs> not that you wouldn't <laughs> I mean it'd be strange if I didn't, it would be strange no, you don't need yeah. a website <laughs> So looking at websites now, because I'm like, I know when we spoke last time, I was sort of talking about how um, in the wedding industry, um, there are still some people that have got websites that look like they were made in the early 90s. And I bet you they're still around. Um, But websites have moved on so, so much. And, you know, technology is one of those things that I think moves at kind of a quicker pace than anything else. It just absolutely five years can make the most immense difference even a year can sometimes depending on what it is make such a huge difference look uh, this time last year I don't know whether that's true I can't remember how long it's been now but didn't have chat GPT you know and now everybody's got this extra AI assistant that they can work with whether they like it or not so what is it that you're seeing with websites now versus then what what are the sort of big changes that you've seen in the last sort of few years with how websites are working for people I think websites work best now when they're really nice and simple clear easy to find what people want to find on them I think when we had the introduction of things like Elementor and Divi you know the big WordPress page builders the sort of the themes that could do everything people were trying to do the parallaxes where you had the images going behind the text they were having all of their lines going this way and that down the website all because they could Mm. and it was like oh this is cool we can throw every kind of design element into one page that is possible and oh good god um and people have got over that now yeah okay we can do that we look back now and go perhaps we shouldn't have done and it's keeping it really clean and fresh and simple and really keeping the website visitor in mind thinking about what it is they're coming to the website for what it is they're going to want to find making it really easy for them to find that so they're much more likely to buy or get in contact or become a lead through your website and I think that is what is really key I am seeing some people taking that to an extreme mm-hmm. and they're being, I mean, I when I go to these websites, I feel like they feel like very arrogant websites. Mm. They've got so little information on them. It's almost like, well, if you come to my website, you should already know everything <laughs> about me. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you anything. I'm literally going to put my business name, two lines, and then you can get in contact. And that's all you need to know. That's too far. And that really annoys me when I see that. I'm just like, oh, I don't want to work with you because I already feel I've got a sense of your personality through your website and I'm done and I will walk away. So things are getting simpler, but don't go too simple Um, because I do think that is off putting that like people go there to get a sense, like you said, of what the business is, what they do get a feel about you know are they the right person to contact before they make that contact and feel like they have to sort of jump in and make that next step so um so yeah getting the balance between not throwing all the design elements at it but giving a good amount of information is uh is is the way to go at the moment yeah so just sort of getting your personality across in a concise simple way um great love that so what are kind of you know because I know you look at websites all day long what are the biggest mistakes you're seeing people make on their websites right now there's a couple and I think it depends on the industry that you're in small businesses that have perhaps been established for a little while um, maybe they've got a family history behind them I'm still seeing far too many of them launch into essentially their autobiography on their home page rather than actually giving the website visitor information that's useful to them to help them decide whether they want to work with the business and whether that business is going to fulfill their needs or wants um, so that's a big mistake leave leave you a little bit about your granddad founded the business and whatever for you about page and keep it all about the services you offer how you can help people on your home page 
Another mistake I'm seeing, especially in the wellness industries, is lots of lovely, fluffy, wonderful words on the homepage that really don't say anything. Um, and so again, it's not very useful. It's great that you're empowering and allowing people to reflect and engaging people and making them, you know, feel wonderful about themselves. But how are you doing that? What kind of things do you do with these people? Um, do, do you do this online? Are you doing it in person? Are you all the things that people are going there to find out and not being answered through this, yeah, just string of, yeah, like <laughs> waffly words. Um, and I did a reel about that, actually, about, yeah, sort of, oh, so what do you do? And you, like, if your website was you in networking, someone mm. saying to you, what do you do in your business? Well, you know, I empower and engage people to feel empowered and engaged and, you know, just generally empower them to feel like, and you don't want that. You're not going to sit there in networking saying that. So don't do it on your website homepage. Um, so, yeah, that's that is like a big mistake I'm seeing. And the third one is no calls to action. Like you're not giving you're not there with an obvious kind of get in touch, book a call, get my free useful checklist. All of these things are really important to have on your website to actually get people to go, oh, okay, yeah, perhaps I will do that and take that step to get to know you a bit better. Um, and I, I spoke to somebody recently and she is going to redo her website because her current one, literally the whole homepage, there is nothing to click on to get in contact with her. And when in the text, really small, she did have her email address, it wasn't clickable. So I'd have had to have copied and pasted it to actually email her. So not having those very obvious, easy to take call to actions is a really big mistake. Love that. Love that. And I, I said to you before we started recording that I actually have had a bit of a website day today because I'm taking part in a program. We spoke about websites this morning. And so I was there's some things that I've realized that I haven't got on my website um, that I need to sort of add in. But one of the things that um she was talking about was somebody whose website she had had a look at and they'd got a Maya Angelou quote as like in that sort of headline space the above the fold space and she was just like that doesn't tell people what you do and she goes well I thought it was empowering and you know it offers strength <laughs> and it's like yeah but what do you do <laughs> <laughs> it's not even exactly. your quote and and I almost gave myself a little pat on the back there because like on my homepage the top line says hi I'm Donna a podcast mentor uh, you know podcaster mentor and, and would be author I will get that book out one day there's a little bit of a personality thing as well and that's kind of my headline with a picture of myself and then further down I have got these little quotes but they're all mine <laughs> yeah so I was just like pat on the back yes well um, done I think there is there's definitely a lot of areas that I could improve on and I think that maybe it's a bit busy I don't know but I've definitely got calls to action there's a banner across the top at the moment that's saying come and join my program before you get to the fold that very bottom part of the fold is also applied to start to to join my program um, and those change depending on whether my program's available or not to freebies and whatnot so um I've got two calls to action before you even scroll anywhere on my website so awesome. yeah I'm getting brownie points there <laughs> One of the things that was actually interesting that I was going to mention when you talked about the family firms that kind of have their, you know, granddad started this in 1849 and all of those kind of things is that um, I said to to the group this morning when I was talking that actually my about page and I don't know whether you're seeing this as something that is universal or maybe I'm just a special snowflake. Um, but my about page is not my second most viewed page, which, you know, for a long time I was hearing from websites site gurus and stuff it's your home page then it's your about page those are your top two viewed and mine's not mine's like my home page and then it's my blog or my podcast and those two are my top most viewed pages so how important is an about page these days and is it is it not not necessary because I know it is you need to have it there but is it better to kind of be sort of dripping in little things about yourself throughout your website rather than hoping that people are going to get that sense of who you are from your about page if they don't click on it 
you need an about page because I think there's some people who really do want to get to know the person before they'll buy. But our about page is in our footer menu, not in our main menu. So mm -hmm. for us, we don't feel that the about page is as important. We think it's much more important that people who come to our website understand what we offer, how we offer it, the pricing for that, the process of working with us. And then, yeah, we have our blog, which gives them useful information, but also showcases our knowledge and expertise to, again, make them feel confident to work with us. Yeah, we think all of that is much more important than them knowing that we're a husband and wife team and how long we've run the business for and why we created Ready Steady websites. Um, and so, but it's there if they want to go and have a look. And mm -hmm. so I'd say for you as well, like, because what you're doing is being a podcast mentor, obviously people, the second thing they're going to want to do is go and check out your own podcast yeah. to prove that you can do what you say you can do. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I think that an about page is still important to have. Um, you can, I think, you know, if you are running a service based business and, you know, it's really relevant to say that you have been doing this for a certain amount of time within kind of your service pages and things like that, you can put in those little bits of information about yourself. Um, but I would, however you're writing your content and structuring a website, you just need to keep thinking what does my website visitor want to know? What's the most important information to get them to want to work with me or buy from me? Yeah. And then that is going to guide your page structure. That's going to guide your content and put in the stuff that's relevant for you, your business, your service. Yeah. And I think, you know, for us, people don't care that much about us as people because we're just creating them a website. But if you're work if somebody's working with you to be a business coach, then actually your own experience and how successful you have been in business yourself is possibly more important to people. Mm. So therefore your about information is going to be more important. So I really think it depends on business to business. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so but yeah, I'm not surprised that your podcast is your second most like looked at thing because it yeah. it proves what you and it makes total sense when you said it there I'm like oh yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> well I was just like my poor about page it's like gathering cobwebs up there but I, I didn't think about moving it to my footer actually because I know I learned from you know I I do learn when I have my guests on I listen I learn I implement so I've got less less than six menu tabs at the top and my about one is one of them so it's potentially one that I don't actually need to have up there I could put it in the footer and make way for you know a, a book a call with me button instead of yeah. a menu tab so um interesting interesting yeah. and one we of the things ours, I was gonna say we lost ours to the footer when we wrote our book and we then wanted our book to be more front and, front center. and center we were like right well we have too many menu items what's going <laughs> our about page <laughs> is no longer as important as the others <laughs> yeah yeah and one of the other things that I, I took away from our last conversation was how people read a page so do you want to go over that quickly for those yeah. that haven't listened to that how people actually sort of navigate a page when they land on it so yeah so if you're looking on a on a computer screen which not everyone will be most people will be looking on a mobile we'll start off with the computer screen <laughs> so if someone comes to the computer screen they tend to look top left first so they'll see a logo probably most websites have got the logo top left and then they go oh yeah that's what their business is that's what they do brilliant then they'll scan across the first couple of menu items in your main navigation. And so that's where you want to have like your, the, those two pages that you most want to attract people's attention to, that you want them to go there. Then they tend to jump and look far right. So that's where it's really good to have your contact button, your book a call button. For us, we've got our join now button. So yeah, that call to action is really good to have top right. Then they'll tend to glance diagonally down across that top hero area. So if you've got an in good engaging statement that really says, boom, this is what my business is. This is what it does. This is how I'm going to help you. Having that central in that area is great. And having two, ideally, call to action buttons underneath that centrally as well that they'll see as their eye goes down. It's really good as well. One of those will be like the join my program, join now, buy now, book a call, something that's a real commitment and then the one next to it should be something else that 
it gets them to engage with you more, perhaps gets them onto your email list. I would always advocate that. So getting a free resource or something like that um, so that they can, if they're not ready to jump in, they can take a little step towards working with you. And it's kind of similar on a mobile for the nav navigation order because they'll click on the drop down mobile, the hamburger icon, as it's referred mm -hmm. to, the three lines. Um, and again, they'll sort of see the top two and then they'll probably just quickly scan down the rest of them and their eyes will hit the bottom again. Um, so that's why it's good to have that menu navigation order. So, um, so yeah, that's brilliant. How people tend to glance around the site to start off with. Fabulous. I think it's a really useful piece of knowledge to know because I think then you actually start doing that, like thinking about it when you go and look at a website, like, oh God, yeah, I just did that. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't know until somebody points it out no. to you that it's actually almost like a universal. Like I watch um a lot of body language analysis on YouTube from a guy called Spidey who lives in um Canada. He's a magician mentalist guy and he's done interrogations and stuff and he does a lot on body behavior and he will say, talk about the universal emotions and expressions that we have on our face and how in almost every country in the world put in your hand up face front means stop or don't come any close move away I've had enough you know it's almost universal but the way we rotate our hands is different in in France they do a lot of hands up whereas in other countries it tends to be hands down when we're talking and I find it absolutely fascinating so it's another one of those things that could almost be put into that body language analysis it's like yeah. how do you scan a page well actually almost universally you know unless you like countries that um have oh, their yeah. dialect differently like read yes. right to left instead yeah. of left to right and whatnot will be different but for the majority of us that read left to right that's how we will navigate a, a website. So I find it all fascinating. Um, so looking at our websites, we're, we're going simple now. Okay, so there's a lot of people that are going to go, oh my gosh, I need to like completely redo my website now because it's, it's far too full of funny bells and whistles. Um, but if we were to all simplify our websites, then that would make it very hard for us to stand out. So what are some of the things that we can do with our website to help us kind of not necessarily stand out because we're not necessarily competing with other websites that people are looking at unless they've got multiple screens like me and I've got websites that, you know, on both of them um but to to help people stay on the page and stop clicking away like how can we entice people to to give us more more of their time with our website I think images are key so straight away as soon as someone hits your website it's the visual impact that is going to keep them there initially so making sure that you've got really good professional photography for the images on your website is really important so if you're a personal brand having really good personal branding shoots headshots that's kind of thing um or but if you've got products having really lo lovely product photography so of your products on a nice white background in their box or whatever but also photos of your products in action so if they are a beauty product product actually seeing someone applying it to their face just getting people kind of to feel like they're experiencing it will get people staying there so yeah images are definitely the first thing um the second thing then is to have that content really talking to your website visitor so that you in that first engaging statement about what you do and that they are in the right place you've really got to show them that you understand them that you have thought about the things that they're thinking about before they've thought about them almost. Um, and then as you go down talking about services or whatever your products or whatever it is you do, you're answering questions that they've got in their mind if you, about if that you are the right person for them to work with or buy from. And that's just key. That is what you really need these days. Um, and I think feeling people feeling like they're understood is is the most important thing and feeling like they are the most important thing to the business rather than yourself, which is why you shouldn't be launching into your autobiography. It doesn't it doesn't matter. Like mm. they don't care about you at this moment. They care about if you understand them. Um, and so I think that's the most important thing that like, it just shows that you get your website visitor and that will keep them there and make them want to keep clicking and looking at the services and hopefully eventually take an action to buy from you or work with you. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Love that. Yeah, I think that's so important. Now, one thing about images that I want to sort of bring up because I 
I'm doing quite a lot at the moment. And weirdly enough, I'm doing the Small Business Britain um, six-week program that they're offering at the moment. And on Monday, our session was on, or not, or was it last week? I think it might have been last week. Our session was on websites. And they got us to go and look at the and I can't remember the website we used to look at the speed of our website. So how good is your SEO? How good is your loading on mobile and desktop? And as for most people, mobile was lower than the um, web browser. But one of the things that it flashed up for me was that I got a very large image on my homepage and it was slowing the rope, which was weird because I even had it on like lazy load because I was told, you know, that little like it'll load it differently, whatever. And that was saying it was a negative, but that was having a negative impact on the speed as well. So I changed the photo. But one of the things I think is important for us to to know is that we can't just upload 20 gig images. So what what is kind of a rule of thumb when it comes to photos because I know some people do have like banner images that go across the whole website and to me that feels like that's going to be quite a big image how do we get that to load quickly but still look good without it looking like a pixelated mess <laughs> so you can put your big image your original big file size image into a website called tiny png um and that will smush it down to the right <laughs> size to use on a website and that Brilliant. is the simplest way to do it and another rule of thumb is make sure that you've got your photos um using jpegs and your things like logos using pngs um and so they should come out looking nice quality but yeah tiny png is a great website for um for sorting out that kind of thing i mean if you're using wordpress there's things like wp smush um just use the word smush as many times as possible in this little <laughs> bit it's like smush your images smush those images down um so yeah there are other things out there that do it um but yeah it's uh, like image file size is one of the biggest culprits that and poor hosting at the mm -hmm. two big biggest culprits when it comes to page speeds and yeah you do want good page speeds because people make decisions very quickly these days and if they're yeah. sitting there waiting for a website to chug along and load they're just gonna go do you know what I'll go and look I at another time website that does the same <laughs> yeah. so yes I did it the other day I was waiting for a website to load it was someone I was having a call with and I was like well I've clearly got to sit here and wait for it to load <laughs> or I have the call with this person but if I wasn't having a call with them I would be done by now and yes. I would have gone yeah <laughs> so, oh yes. my goodness yeah very important so we want images because they are good for engagement but they need to be fast loading images so that people actually get to see them before they've got bored and clicked away <laughs> Especially as, like you said, like mobile speeds tend to come back worse, but most browsing browsing is done on a mobile. And you know, if you're out and about and you're trying to find something, you're not you're gonna be on your 4G and it's not gonna be particularly fast. So yeah, it's gotta be, it's gotta be good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so fabulous, fabulous um input from you there. Can you give us three little tips to take away of things that we could do to to improve our websites um obviously you know if if there there's a lot that needs doing we should definitely come and talk to you and chris and and get them sorted out but if we just need to tweak a little bit what are the three things that you think we should be doing I mean, first of all, I'd say get really clear on the purpose of your website. What is the actual action that you want somebody to take when they're coming to your website? Is it you want them to book a call? Is it that you want to buy one of your products? Is it that you want them to actually join a program now? And make sure then that your whole website is pointing your website visitors to take that action. Um, that's your copy. That's your call to actions and everything like that. Um, the second thing I would say is to review your content and make sure it really is speaking to that website visitor. It's showing your website visitor that you understand why they've landed on your website, what it is that they want, and that you can offer them that. Um, and then the third thing I would say is make sure that you are actually using and maintaining your website regularly, that you haven't had a website created or created it yourself and just gone, tick, I've done that. I'll just leave that there for three years now and do nothing with it. Actually 
actively add new content to your website use your blog to demonstrate your expertise and to demonstrate again that you really get what your website visitor is looking for if you've got new testimonials put them on there so that people can see how fantastic what you do is actually use that website as a really good marketing tool and I would say be adding something new to it at least once a month Fabulous. I love those tips. Thank you so much. So um, where can people find you if they want to find out more about Ready Steady websites? I've got, I've got a feeling I know what's coming. <laughs> I think I think they should go to our website. I think that would be <laughs> the best place to go, which is readysteadywebsites.com. Um, you that. can find us on Facebook and Instagram. Oh, tell Ready us your Steady Instagram website. handle because you do do some great reels. I love your reels. We haven't done any for a while. I feel like we've got to get back on it again. We're Ready Steady Websites on Instagram and on Facebook um, and on YouTube. We have some helpful videos on YouTube um, and I am on LinkedIn as well if anyone wants to come and connect and ask me to help by giving them a free website review happy to do that I am Jude Wharton on LinkedIn so um so yeah I'm quite easy to find really. fabulous so I have a quick fire round which we didn't do last time um, because this is something that came new to to the podcast a while back um, but I absolutely love doing it so if you are up for it I've got three little questions for you Go for it. I don't know where that accent came from. I was like, <laughs> went into a completely different, and I was like, <laughs> surprise, surprise, it's still a real <laughs> game show host uh, accent. Um, so what is the book that you feel has made the biggest impact on your life so far? Almost like I knew you were going to ask me this because I brought the books. Oh, no, they're back. Oh, wow. Back. But Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller is a fantastic business book for all kinds of marketing, but his messaging around websites is absolutely on point as well so thoroughly recommend that book for any business owner and then Casper Craven where the magic happens from a more personal point of view talks about his journey he just he traveled the world with his family I mean he might be slightly mad to travel the world on a boat with children as young as his were at the time but it really did inspire us to just do mini adventures we have not traveled the world but we bought our camper van and we just wanted to get out there more and we love our van even if it's just a day at the beach rather than a full-on camping trip it's just so nice to escape and yeah. get that time so yeah those two books that's that. brilliant I'm gonna have to look at that one so he's almost like so he, did he, li he live the boat was their vehicle of choice for moving around yeah, well, they lived on the so they did a full world sailing tour on their boat. They they rented out their house for the Brilliant. year while they were on the boat, like homeschooled their children on a boat, school, like an original van lifer. But he did it by sea. Yeah, I love it absolutely, and just you know, incredible. It yeah. was just. I mean, I think there were challenging moments, but on the whole, Imagine. an incredible experience. Yeah, sort of wow. Thing amazing okay so next one what is your go-to snack if you're in a hurry cashew nuts oh nice and easy nice and Handful easy of cashew nuts just yep yeah I, I'm not a big fan of cashews I don't think oh. I prefer my peanuts love my peanut butter and almonds love my almonds but cashews are on, on mm. I don't yeah, know. I'll have, to, I'll have to try. I have to try. Yeah. Good. Love that. And what is your ultimate me time thing to do? Because I mean, we've we've already heard you spend pretty much twenty four seven with your husband, three hundred and sixty five days of the year, and you've got two young boys. What do you do for you? Where 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 do you go? What's your favorite thing to just like? No, just me for a moment. It's swimming or we have recently created a gym in our garage, which I mean, that sounds a bit posh for what it actually is. <laughs> we put some mats on the floor. There's yeah. a punch bag in there and one bench with some weights we got free from somewhere. Brilliant. Um, but yeah, swimming. I love going half an hour swimming, just power, just doing lengths back up and down. Or going out into the garage and kicking and punching the punch bag. I actually recently put a post on LinkedIn of me kicking and punching the punch bag. 
<laughs> so it's great it's for a social great media way, yeah. content. Great to get that energy out. Love yes, it. Oh, definitely. Brilliant. So yeah, fitness basically is my uh, is my me time. Yeah. Love that. Love that. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Jude. It's been an absolutely fantastic conversation. And everybody, all of Jude's links will be in the show notes. So please do go ahead and connect with her um, and see what Ready Steady Websites is up to. Um, and I'll be back next week with another podcast for you. So we'll see you then. So I hope you enjoyed that episode with Jude. Join me next week where I will be having the lovely Viv with me on the Mini Mindset Monday and I'll be back on Thursday with another episode. See you then. Bye for now. Don't forget to hit those stars and leave a review of the podcast where you listen if you found value in what you heard today. It's a free way you can help the podcast reach more people just like you.